welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. And uh, today I have a, a co-adventure guide who's on our show, I think, for the second time. Uh, yes. Usually people don't come back. Once they've been on, they're like, I'm never going to go back on that show. But Thomas Sullivan is a real warrior, and so he's uh, getting it out, and he's going to be a guest again today with us. Uh, Tom Sullivan, you changed my life, dude. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Bear. It's, uh, it's great to be back, and uh, I don't know why guys don't come back. I mean, yeah, oh, you know, they're oh. – <laughs> I mean, this is this is Bear's man cave. Let's get into it, dude. That's so cool. No, dude, you. I I talk about you a lot. I, I can't. I just can't help it. I did. Mm-hmm. You know, I do an Ocean Sunrise Catechism every morning. The I see su- it. I watch uh, it on Facebook. I see it. And uh, today I was talking about your rosary again. You know how it. And last night at the Bear's man cave meetup, there was a new guy there, Pete, Peter, and I said, dude, you got to get Tom Sullivan's war. If you if you're coming back to the Lord, you need to get into the. You need to. Pray the rosary. You need to be a warrior, and you got to get Tom's warrior rosary. And then someone else wrote to me today to say to just to talk about that. So that's one of the things we're going to touch on sure. is uh, this 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 rosary that you gave me when I was on the set there with Women of Grace with Jeanette Benkovic. And yeah. dude, it's the most powerful. Uh, it, it it impacted my uh, intercessory prayer life. Yeah, such a huge well, way. If I can tell you a little bit about its origins. Yeah, let's go for um, it. Let me, because it, it really came out of my own masculine prayer life as a man. Um, you know, I, my background was in the military. I was in the military for 12 years. Um, I spent uh, five of those years as a company commander training recruits and preparing them, you know, to go out into the, into the military life. And uh, when I came back into the faith, that transferred over. And it, that, that whole military understanding uh, transferred over to my spiritual life and to spiritual warfare. I had learned that through prayer, and when, we, when we're in prayer, uh, the catechism teaches us that uh, prayer is a battle, and it uses the term battle over 25 times in the catechism, um, which kind of piqued my interest. And uh, so I, as I began over the years to understand this concept of battle in prayer, and every time we go into prayer, that we enter into a battle, and that the Christian life on earth is a warfare, as the church teaches us. Um, I, I started seeing this this reality, and, and, and as I would go into prayer with my rosary, uh, I would see myself and envision myself on the battlefield as a knight, sl- you know, swinging a sword and a shield and, and battling the dragon of sin, you know. And then I would open my eyes and look at my rosary that I was praying, and it was nice. It was, you know, a kind of feminine, you know, a piece of jewelry, and I'd fall off the battlefield, you know. Uh, in my mind, if you would. And I was looking at it and I'd look at the crucifix and I would think, you know, I, I want to hold a sword. I want to, I want to see, and you know, bears, you know, as well as I do, we're men, we're visual characters. You know, we don't, we have a hard time envisioning things. And unlike, you know, uh, our, our wives and, 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 and women in general, women are very good at internalizing and being receptive and, and being, you know, close and in tune with God intuitively. We're not. We're conquerors. You know, we're we're warriors. We're out there to 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 conquer the world, and and we're very external. So we see things. We're wired that way. And so for me, I wanted my prayer life and the tools that I was using in my prayer life to reflect that visual reality. And so what came to mind as I was praying one morning was I did want a a, a sword in my hand. And so I thought, well, I'm just going to go buy one. So I went online and I did a search for a sword crucifix and there wasn't any. And so I did a search for a, a, a knife crucifix or a sword cross, all these different combinations. Mm. And I could find nothing at all that would give me that representation. Um, so I designed something uh, and went into my computer and I designed what I thought I would like to see. Um, a little while, and I, I was going to just have a crucifix made uh, of a sword so I could put it on my existing rosary. I had there no plans yeah. to create anything. I just wanted the sword to put on my rosary. But, you know, uh, Our Lady and Our Lord had different uh, intention, 
And so when I tried to uh, have one made and looked into it, it was so expensive. There was just no way I could do it. So I went back to praying my rosary. But then the thought didn't leave me. It kept on, you know, our, our Lord, I, I'm sure it was Our Lady, you know, and Our Lord just kept prompting me, you know, to keep thinking about this, keep thinking about this. And then all of a sudden, the concept came to me of a spiritual special forces team that nobody goes into battle alone. And this comes out of my military background. Nobody goes into battle alone. And then I began thinking, if the Christian life on earth is a warfare, is there ever a situation where God left us alone or sent us into life alone? And I realized, well, God, first of all, when he created us, he gave us a guardian angel. Jesus, with his apostles, sent them out in pairs. He didn't send them out alone. And then I began to realize that in battle, we have in the communion of saints, this spiritual warfare, special forces team that are there to aid us. And so then I started thinking about, you know, if I'm going to go into battle and prayer, then I want to have some of the best warriors that I could find going to battle with me. So I thought, I am going to put a rosary together. And on the Our Father medals, I'm going to make the medals a shield. And I'm going to feature a warrior from some point in history who fought the battle in this life, but also who who has now made it into heaven and is an example for you and I, and who can intercede for us and who can go into battle with us. And then I would now have at my fingertips the sword when I go into prayer on the rosary I would have each of my special forces teams, my comrades going into battle on each decade of the rosary. And so I then uh, I was at the radio conference. Uh, matter of fact, when you and I were there, uh, had, had met there and we talked, I met you for the first time up the EWTN radio conference. Um, and I was speaking with a man uh, who was a representative from Gorelli's and uh, Gorelli's is the premier rosary making company in Italy. And they make the Vatican rosaries for Pope John Paul II, the ben- Pope, Pope Benedict, uh, Pope Francis. And um, they said, let us, let us see your concept. And so I, I sent them my, my idea, my concept, and they came absolutely off the floor. They were like, there is nothing in the world like this. There's nothing like this in the world. And, and, and we've been doing rosaries for, for a long time, and you, you've got to let us do this with you. I said, well, what's it going to cost me? You know, because I don't have the money for this stuff, you know. And they were like, it doesn't cost anything. We have this program. And then they went out to tell me about their program, how, you know, they work with me and, uh, and, and they become the providers of it. And that's what happened. And so just out of, you know, all, all barriers to creating this Warrior's Rosary came down. And then we began this design process two years back and forth, back and forth uh, to get it exactly the way I had envisioned it. Um, and to capture, to capture the reality of us going into battle, to capture the reality that, that we're in spiritual warfare, and to capture the reality that I, as a man, am now holding a weapon to do battle. You know, I got to tell you, something really cool happened with my warrior rosary. And we'll, I want to talk a little bit more about that, uh, the impact on my personal life. But when we were rolling thunder in the reality show uh, Long Ride Home, by the way, yes. you're going to dig this, Tom. The Long Ride Home uh, series, you know, EWTN uh, airs it. Mm-hmm. Did you know the Armed mm-hmm. Forces Network is showing it? I did not. Isn't that cool? That is really cool. Yeah, 10 episode yeah. series on the Armed Forces Network. And uh, we're throwing, I think it's, it'll be up on Amazon Prime and iTunes and hopefully Netflix. We're working really hard to get the trailer ready so that we can mm. uh, send it there. But you know what? Um, as we're rolling thunder across the United States, uh, Tony and I show up in uh, Louisiana border. Yeah. As we get to the Louisiana border, this group of really gnarly guys, the Catholic Cross Bears Motorcycle Ministry, yeah. meet us at the border. They say, we're going to escort you, you know, a little ways. Well, it turns out they escorted us all the way across Louisiana. I, wanted to, I think they wanted to make sure we left, you know? <laughs> but That's when we cool. first showed up, they're off their bikes, kind of arrayed, uh, just five of them or six of them, uh, kind of focusing towards us. And Tony and I pull off, and we're, fo- we're aimed at them. It's kind of like a standoff, right? Mm-hmm. And so my natural inclination is to say, show us your weapons. And it was the right. coolest thing, man, because every one of them had a rosary. And I had your rosary in my, uh, in my vest. Every one of them had rosaries and pulled uh-huh. out their rosaries knowing that this was their weapon. Right. 
And that's what, that's what radically changed in my life was, um, was when I uh, began to pray with your rosary. Mm-hmm. From that point forward, I, I, I guess I don't even think I knew what intercessory prayer was before then. I thought I did. But wow. the, 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 the impact, uh, praying that rosary, um, and not always holding it. You know, sometimes right. I'm surfing. I'm yeah. praying the rosary almost all the time, you know, uh-huh. at the, in the elevator or stand-up paddle surfing or whatever I'm doing. But uh, I would take on one project. Uh, uh, you know, I wouldn't do official nine-day novenas, but I would take on one prayer project for nine days at a time. And it would just be amazing, the impact, uh, when you pick yeah. up your when you pick up your uh, your weapon. We're talking with Tom Sullivan. Uh, what we're specifically talking about is his warrior rosary. If you're If you're watching us, on YouTube, by the way, if you're not, you ought to be. I know you're probably listening on EWTN or Sirius Radio or one of our podcast apps. But if you, if you can, if you go to our Bear Wozniak YouTube site and subscribe, uh, you'll be able to wa- you'll be able to watch uh, watch our conversation too. Um, and you can kind of take a look at what the rosary looks like. But um, this rosary is heavy. It's made out of hematite too. And I tell people, you know, the cross. It looks to me, uh, it's. It, I would call it like a martial arts. Kubaton. It literally is. You can take this on the plane with you, but in a moment of self-defense, it would be very effective. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so uh, Tom, uh, we have that at our website, bearwasnick.com. It's, it's in our store. We have a couple different versions of it, and you have some more versions uh, coming out soon. So right. I just challenge people to uh, go to our website, check them out. Hey, um, also, I want to invite people, go to our website. We've got a lot of cool stuff from our reality show, Long Ride Home, too. We've got motorcycle pins and patches and shirts and racerback tees for the women or tanks for the women. And we've got the man cave beer mug, the man cave <laughs> whiskey tumbler and the man cave cigars. The seven virtue cigars are available for you there. Uh, this is bear Wozniak with a bear Wozniak adventure. We have our guest Tom Sullivan. We'll be right back. That's right. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're with a friend of mine, who I probably think a lot more about him than he thinks about me because I'm holding his rosary every day that he created, the, the warrior rosary that so radically uh, changed my life. Uh, it created uh, a real, I don't know, I feel like I'm, when I pray I got the baddest warrior in the, in, in the universe, Mary, praying with me. And yeah. things happen, man. Things happen. Um, yeah. You know, I've heard a lot of stories like that, Bear. Um, and it isn't, it isn't the, uh, you know, our lady and our Lord are working so powerfully through the warrior's rosary. And, uh, at first I thought it was when I first created it, as I was talking about earlier, I thought it was, I was doing it kind of just for me, you know? Um, but boy, I tell you, I have, uh, gotten so much feedback from around the world, uh, of people who are praying the warrior's rosary, uh, and, and telling me just how powerful, it has been in their lives. It is, you are not alone. There are many, 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 many out there. Um, I was up at uh, EWTN doing, I produced the television show, Women of Grace, and I had a group of pilgrims come through. And uh, this one gentleman came over to me and he says, uh, Tom, I'm going to tell you something. He said, I had a friend, I have a friend uh, who's battling pancreatic cancer. And I bought him a hematite men's warrior's rosary uh, to help him in his battle. And he said he would take the rosary as he was praying it and he would place it where his pain was. And this went on for weeks. He said, then he said, you're not going to believe this. He went back to the doctor 
and there was no sign of his cancer anywhere. Mm. And he attributes it to Our Lady's intervention. And I was talk- talking with Father Donald Calloway about this. And Father said to me, he said, you know, Tom, this is not uncommon because the rosary is like an extension of Our Lady's touch. And so when we're praying the rosary, not even not just the warrior's rosary, the warrior's rosary has a lot of symbols for us as men, you know, to get into battle. But when we're praying the rosary, it is Our Lady's touch and she's touching you and she's touching me and she's touching all of those those areas in our lives that we we are asking her to when we pray the rosary. And the warrior's rosary just seemed to uh, scratch an itch, if you would, for guys like you and me and and who are trying to 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 embrace our authentic masculinity as spiritual leaders uh, and warriors in our family and here in life in the church. Amen. You know, and I, I get to go to, with Father Don Calloway to the Holy Lands this Christmas. So I hope you feel bad about that. Cool. I oh, feel that- really bad for you that you're not going. Oh, I tell you <laughs> what, don't rub it in, okay? <laughs> but can you... Know, you- it was a- I'm sorry, go ahead. No, Father Don, uh, his, his beautiful uh, new book, The Champions of the Rosary. Yeah. I've read it once. I'm reading it again. Uh, just to... Did you see the Warrior's Rosary in there? Yes, I can't miss it. Yeah, I knew you did. <laughs> so, um, uh-huh. so I wanted, uh, can you please describe to people the different, uh, the, the five saints that you have on the, and by the way, I want to encourage people, you can go to our website and we can direct ship it to your friends for Christmas if you like, but you can go to our website and get this rosary. Can you describe the, uh, the five champions you have uh, oh, sure. uh, on the uh, shields for yeah, the decades. You and, yep, and, and, uh, and let me just say this before I do that, uh, and we can talk about this later, but Johnette Bankovic and myself just came out with a new book titled The Rosary, Your Weapon for Spiritual Warfare. Yeah, amen. And it ta- talks a little bit about you know, where the battle began, et cetera. But in that book are all of the saints on all of the warriors' rosaries, uh, the EWTN Warriors Rosary, the Men's Warriors Rosaries, the Women's Warriors Rosaries, the Fatima Warriors Rosaries. The, every saint is in there with complete bios, you know, with a particular focus on their military activity, whether it be spiritual military or or their their physical uh, military, uh, before they uh, got into spiritual warfare, if you would. So um, that's a um, uh, and they can get that at uh, you know at my website, thewarriorsrosary.com. But if, if you're looking to really unpack these saints as you're going into battle with them, you, you got to have that book. But anyway, the uh, after the crucifix with the sword, so you're going into battle. The very first Our Father, which is where we you know we normally pray for the intentions of the Holy Father, um, is Saint Joseph, Terror of Demons, under his title. Um, and I chose that because Saint Joseph is a patron of fathers. He's the patron of the church, and his title, Terror of Demons, is one of the oldest titles of St. Joseph, in the, and it's in the, uh, 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 the litany of St. Joseph, uh, Terror of Demons. And that caught my attention, um, and we can go into more of that after. But the next medal is uh, where we, play our, we pray our first mystery is St. Michael, and each of these medals on the back have their title. Uh, so Michael— is invincible warrior since he the, the war first war that was fought began in heaven it was led by michael the victory was led by michael michael cast out uh, the serpent uh down to the earth and um they were victorious uh so we start off the rosary with michael after michael we move into the third century uh with a with a saint known as saint george the great martyr he's also known as the dragon slayer people have seen pictures of him on a horse uh, you know, uh, spearing a dragon. Uh, George was ex- was executed. He was a general in the Roman army um, under Diocletian, Ooh. and Diocletian was the emperor at the time. And jo- and and Christianity, as you remember, was illegal. And but George stood up and professed his 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 Christian faith. Uh, was sharing it with the other soldiers, and Diocletian said, "We're not having any of that." But he really liked. George. And so he was, you know, trying to encourage him and buy him off. And George wasn't having any of it. And so eventually they ended up, Diocletian ended up executing him. Well, you know, the, uh, thing, the thing about that then, uh, not too long after that, he was the emperor of the, the Eastern part of the Roman empire. Pretty soon here comes Constantine, yes, you know, within, within just a decade. And then, and, yes. a, and then, uh, uh, so that those, the blood of those, of those people that Diocletian Killed yes. were like the explosive power, I think, of this trans- right. transformation when Constantine yep. and the the uh, Edict of Milan, right? 
legalized. The blood, of the, martyrs, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church, right? Amen. 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 So, I, I, so, so I, we, it's a great story. As, mm -hmm. we as we continue to move on through the through the rosary, we have um, uh, George Saint. I'm sorry. Um, we have um, a, uh, Ignatius of Loyola, and he has a title, Father General. Uh, he's the founder of the Jesuits. Um, but Ignatius, as you know, you may know this, may, many people know, well, he was a soldier, you know, and, and, and he broke his leg, you know, got hit with a cannonball and then he was, uh, uh, in recovery and he converted reading the book, you know, the life of Christ. Uh, however, um, what people don't know is that he was a knight before that. And so he was knighted as an actual knight and then went into, uh, service as a soldier. Um, and so his representation of his, you know, being on the battlefield, being a warrior, coming home to Christ, like many of us do, we come back to the faith and come back to our Lord, and then taking our military background and turning it into our understanding and strength for spiritual warfare, as he did when he not only founded the Jesuit order, but he also went on to uh, put together as what is known today as the, the spiritual exercises of Ignatius. Um, then we have Louis the Ninth. Now, I chose Louis the Ninth because he was uh, uh, the king of France. He's the only canonized king of France. Um, and he was uh, uh, led the crusade, led, led one of the crusades. Now, he wasn't killed in the crusades, nor was he martyred. He, he died of a, of a disease. But the reason I chose him was, one, because of his, his leadership in leading a crusade, but also as an example of a father. Um, there is a complete discourse about uh, where Louis was talking to his sons about being his son, about being a good man and a good Catholic man and how to hold on to Christ and hold on to his faith and how it would be better for him to be dead than to commit one mortal sin. It's an amazing uh, representation and example for us as men and husbands and fathers. Uh, so, do, so, so Louis the Ninth had a dual purpose. Uh, and then finally, uh, coming around the corner there, as we come down to the end of our Warriors Rosary, as we're praying uh, each decade and calling on each of these individual warriors to enter into battle with us and to intercede for us on each decade, um, we have a young martyr, Jose Luis Sanchez del Rio, and his story was made famous by the uh, the movie For Greater Glory. Uh, he was 14 years old. If you remember, Catholicism was outlawed in Mexico. Um, they were exporting and killing uh, priests. Uh, they were exporting the bishops and the nuns, uh, Catholics. They, they closed the church. They, they, it, it was a terrible persecution. And it was known as the, 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 uh, the Mexican Revolution, or, or in these particular men were the, the Cristeros, they were called, men and women. And Jose wanted to, to fight, and so he went off into, in, and joined up, uh, and he carried the the um, uh, the flag. He was a flag bearer. He carried the standard, basically. Um, and Jose got captured. He was tortured. His feet were were sliced and made to to walk, uh, you know, on on salt on cement. He was imprisoned in a in a his own parish church is where they kept him. Um, and there's a there's a the, the whole story of Jose is, is in our book, The Rosary. We're, we're gonna Street. we're gonna we're gonna have to. I want to get back and talk more about. Sure. About this yeah. young man, I really, I really love him. We're talking with Tom yeah, Sullivan. He is our, uh, he is the creator. Uh, I think God inspired him to create the Warrior Rosary, which changed my life. It's, um, and it's available at our website, deepadventure.com, or it's easier to just find it if you remember my name, bearwoznik.com. It takes you to the same place, and we have a couple of his Warrior Rosaries. We're going to add a couple more here uh, in the next, uh, next little while in time for Christmas, but. Uh, we love this. This this uh, rosary transformed my. I feel like a real warrior now in terms of my intercessory prayer, and uh, I'm just very blessed to have this rosary. This is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak adventure. We'll be right back. Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak adventure. This is the place that you go it kind of reminds me of, you know, we have this site called Bears Man Cave, private Facebook group. People, men can, oh, men only can join 
they have to go to my bearwoznik.com site to join. Don't You can't join by going via Facebook. We have to add you. But it reminds me of the man cave. Uh, there's so many different caves. I'm writing a new book, by the way, on, on, uh, called The Man Cave. But the cave of Adullam, where um, King David fled to and hid uh, when he was being chased by Saul, King Saul. And it says that every kind of man joined him there. The misfits and people who owed money <laughs> joined him there. And so I always tell people, welcome to our show. If you feel like you don't fit anywhere in anywhere or you feel like you're a misfit, you're going to fit in just fine with us, right, Tom? That's right. We've got Tom Sullivan here. He's the creator of the Warrior Rosary. What were you going to say, Tom? No, that's all. You're right. We, uh, uh, you know, the church is made up of, of all kinds, and, and, and the, the military is made up of people from all backgrounds. And, uh, you know, you're looking for a place— you know, this is where it is. Bunch of misfits. In, in man cave. <laughs> I'm glad to be here with you, Bear. I'll tell you. Hey, I want to. You know, we have to. It's very important as men. It's, it's a, for, this is made to say this. It's very important for us as men. I like to call it sharpening swords together. And and this is what we do when men get together and we, we hammer out the faith and we, you know, we just be men together. You know, that's a brotherhood. Here's the thing, uh, Tom. Uh, here's the thing is that uh, I know that. Um, when I was in Rome last month, and you go into the um, Vatican area, the colonnade with all those saints, the statues of the saints, the great cloud of witnesses, and then you see the, on the facade above you, above St. Peter's Basilica, the apostles. And they're gnarly-looking dudes, man. They're tough-looking. <laughs> yeah. They're gritty-looking. I'm not saying right. we all have to be tough-looking guys, but we should, have a sure. tough, we should have a tough and gritty soul. And right. they're looking down at you like, so what's taking you so long? You know, like, right. dude, yeah. you know, get, let, let's go into battle together. Let's get, let's, let's share right. the gospel, you know? And I stayed just, wow, just a few hundred yards from where Barnabas, St. Barnabas, you know, the son of encouragement. Yeah. But I want to ask you, let's talk a little bit more about Jose. Uh, yeah, sure. Go back into that story. Cause I want to tell you something you're going to really be stoked about. Go ahead though. Okay. Yeah. Um, anyway, so Jose really stuck out for me because at the time I had a, um, I had a 16 year old son, Joshua, who was getting ready to make his confirmation and uh, we had watched the the movie together, and he actually took his name as his confirmation name. So um, when I when I found this little guy, and I started putting together the spiritual warfare special forces team that was going to be going on this warrior's rosary, he just had a spot. Um, there were some stories, and so let me just tell you this about how. I found Jose too, because this is extremely remarkable. And our lady was definitely moving in this. I was searching for a photo of Jose to use so that it can be turned into a metal. And I found a photo that I thought was Jose. And he had the, yeah, the, the, the uh, ammo belts across his chest with his hat on and his gun and everything. And I found that photo. And as I was searching around on the, uh, on the web, I found a Cristero website that had all kinds of what looked to me like original photos, uh, all in sepia color, but original photos uh, from that time uh, of the persecution of the Cristeros. Um, so I contacted the site owner and I sent him the photo. Now, the site owner lived down in Mexico. And I, and I sent him the photo and I said, um, do you know who owns this photo? Because I'd like to get permission to use it uh, you know, on this project I'm working on. And he wrote me back in Spanish, so I had to have it translated. But he said, that's not Jose. That was a movie image of an actor representing Jose. Um, and it was a black and white. It was a really tough looking, uh, cool photo. But he said, the, he said, there are only two photos of Jose, and I have them. And here they are. And he sent them both to me. One of them was a portrait of Jose, and one of, the, one of them was his, uh, his first communion photo. Um, so I asked him, I said, can I use these on the project? You know, and I told him what I was doing, uh, making this warrior's rosary and et cetera. And he said, oh, absolutely. Go ahead. And I said, as a matter of fact, I will send you one when it's completed. Um, so I went ahead and, uh, took that photo and had the image made for Jose, uh, on that metal. When the project was all finished, um, I sent, uh, I, 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 I contacted, uh, the young man and I said, I have um, the project done. I have the Warriors Rosie finished. If you, you'll send me an address there in Mexico, I will send you one. He then writes me back and he says, could you send me two? You see, my family knows Jose's family and his, his, his descendants. And I'm going to visit them. Wow. In wow. 
And if you send me two, I will give one to Jose's family there, you know, when he got there in January. I flipped. I could not believe it was, to me, it was such a confirmation and a blessing from heaven that here, you know, we find this young man and it's placed on my heart to put him on this warrior's rosary. And then I meet somebody through the internet in Mexico whose family is is associated with Jose's family, who they travel and, and meet and visit each other. And he wanted to have, he wanted Jose's descendants to have the warrior's rosary since Jose was on it. I had goosebumps, I have to tell you, of confirmation of that. It was just, you know, that's my Jose story no, he, after the fact. Now he's beloved San, uh, Jose Sanchez he, Del Rio? No, he's saint now. He he's was saint. Blessed. Yeah, he's saint ah, now. Okay, so I mean blessed, yeah. I, I, Changed the medals. Yeah, my medals have all been changed. He's Saint Jose. Oh, uh, no. So let me tell you something. Saint Sanchez Del Rio, please pray for us. Let Amen. me tell you something. When, when I got this rosary, then I was writing my book, Deep Adventure of the Way of Heroic Virtue. So I put Jose Sanchez Del Rio in as one of the examples of, of mm -hmm. one of the virtues. Mm -hmm. And then we do the long ride home. You know, we're riding motorcycles from Cocoa Beach, Florida right. to San Diego and up to Monterey. And, uh, we get to um, Houston, Texas, Father Mark Goring, pastor of the Catholic Charismatic Center there. And uh, at the end of Mass, they shout out, Viva Cristo Rey. Oh, and, cool. And I remembered this from my, when I was mm. about 23 or so, I led the worship at a church in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the services, they would always yell, Viva Cristo Rey, que Viva Cristo Rey, you know. And, uh, yeah. and I was like, well, what is that about? And they gave me like a very... A, very short little answer. Back in those days, you couldn't Google right. it, right? So, so yes. I looked up and found out more out about him. So when we got there, uh, what we did then is we took the cry of the Cristeros. You know, when the Mexican revolutionaries would ride it on their horses, kill the priests, desecrate the altar, kill the parishioners, cap capture mm -hmm. them, they would yell, Viva la Revolution. And the Cristeros would yell out, Viva Cristo Rey! Right. And so I've taken that as the call for the the men's movement now and all through the episodes basically from the Houston shoot all the way we went into the big Ben country of Texas. And there's wow. this one scene, Tom in episode six, you're going to just dig on it so much. Mm -hmm. So opening of, se of scene six, we're up in a Mesa well before sunrise and most of you don't go to the big Bend as you're passing through to go someplace else, right? You got to want to go there. It's right mm -hmm. down there where they chased, um, Pancho Villa across the river, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, so it's very remote, the Rio Grande River, right on the border of Mexico. And so we're up there on the top of this mesa, and it's so cool the way reality shows work. <laughs> you know, you kind of write them as you go. And I'm yeah. reading from the Apostles' Creed, or I believe it, yeah, the Apostles' Creed, and you hear this, you hear this kind of, it's out in the middle of the desert, it's kind of a gritty sound of gravel moving and stuff, and then you see along the ridge lines, I've got the men posted up there, Father Mark and Jay Flunker and... Timothy McCormick and uh, Jerry Cohn and all these men up there uh, on the ridge line, mm. and uh, the drone shot comes up, and the sun still hasn't risen. It's just golden behind them, and it shows each of them praying or holding the rosary. And then I yell to them, Viva Cristo Rey! And they yell back, and it echoes. And I yell, wow. Viva Cristo Rey! And they yell back, and it echoes. You got to watch it, man. And then throughout the... That. Cool. So throughout the show, whenever we're making a departure, we do Viva Cristo Rey. And then a friend of mine uh, showed me a handshake they used to use when they were youth. You kind of like you, 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 you hit your, your chest, and then you, uh, you, you handshake like this, the class handshake, you know, with forearm to forearm. Then you hit your chest, and then you point to the sky, and we would yell out Viva Cristo Rey, so wherever we were. And so mm. it's become your, your rosary inspired me to get to know this young saint, and uh, that inspired this whole thing. It's a big part of Long Ride Home. You see it wow. in season two. We shot season two, by the way. We, we rolled thunder with the Archbishop down to Key West just before the hurricane. Uh -huh. And then we rolled all the way up to New Jersey and down the Blue Ridge Parkway and then down the Tail of the Dragon, the most, one of the most dangerous motorcycle roads. And I think they have like 318 S turns and 11 miles. So, but your, wow. your, your, that gift of the rosary that you gave me that day is really, I mean it, it's changed my life in so many ways, and uh, praise God for, for saying, so now listen, you got, no, we, we ran out of time, we didn't even get to talk about knighthood. 
Well, here let, let's just say it this way. We got what we is got Nigeria? four. We got you twenty. Know? We got twenty seconds. Yeah, I mean, it's simple. <laughs> you know, it's men rising up to be sons of God, to be warriors in His kingdom, and to reclaim our culture. You know, that's what it's about: yeah. to be spiritual leaders. Grab onto your uh, your rosary and uh, you know take on the challenge as a real man and grabbing onto authentic femininity designed by God. So uh, th- women need to be authentically feminine, feminine. Men need to be authentically masculine. You made a male and female. Okay, so uh, this is Bear Wozniak. You guys go to our website, bearwozniak.com. You can grab, uh, you can order some of Tom's uh, war- uh, warrior rosaries for yourself, your friends for Christmas, and, and to uh, really expand your prayer life. Good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Uh, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. And it is an adventure. Uh, we believe that adventure begins when you abandon yourself to God's will. Uh, you know, the world, this, this life is a life of adversity, but the first three letters of that, are the, the first four letters of that are the same as the word adventure. And so uh, in this life of adversity, we need to, <laughs> excuse me, develop a warrior type mentality. And that's why we have Tom Sullivan on our, our show. We're talking about uh, the warrior rosary, uh, which we have available at bearwasnick.com. But Tom, we wanted to grab you and, and talk a little bit. Uh, well, one of your books that I love is Called to Knighthood about the it Sacrament does. of Confirmation. And then your new book is called what? About the Rosary? The Rosary, Your Weapon for Spiritual Warfare. Okay. Oh, it's my weapon. That's <laughs> your okay. weapon. Uh, well, buddy. thank you. You wrote it just for me. Wow. But talk to us about spiritual knighthood. I love this, this, yeah. this book. Yeah, this is really something that, that, uh, that I've developed, uh, and actually didn't develop it, but I, I found it in the church's teaching, and I just kind of brought it to light in the book called The Knighthood. Um, you know, over the years, I've been studying the kingdom and come to understand the church's kingdom. You know, and when Jesus says the kingdom of God is at hand, he meant it. Mm. And uh, so I started looking at and learning about the Old Testament kingdom of Solomon, actually the kingdom of David, which which became the king, you know, the kingdom of Solomon and then his descendants, etc. And what happened. And I started to look at the correlation between the New Testament establishment of the kingdom with the son of David, Jesus, to Amen. the Old Testament kingdom of David with the son of David, who is all who is now saw who was Solomon in the Old Testament. And I discovered just to give you a quick run over, you know, the Old Testament had a structure to it. It had a king. Uh, in uh, in First Kings chapter two, we discover that there's there's a queen mother. That every time the king is mentioned throughout First and Second Kings, um, they mention who his mother is because she's the queen mother. Uh, you discover in Isaiah 22 that there is a master of the palace or a or a, uh, a prime minister, if you will, who holds the keys of the kingdom of David, who can open and no one can shut, and who can shut and no one can open. In First Kings chapter four, you discover that there Solomon has twelve governors that help him to run the kingdom, and then as you continue down, you know, learning the structure of the kingdom and the various offices, you also discover that Solomon has warriors, he has soldiers, he has knights, whatever you want to call that, that, that office of a warrior. Um, and his purpose of the warrior's purpose is to spread and defend the kingdom by, you know, to, to, to uh, repel any attackers, but to also spread that kingdom, to go out and conquer. And so, when we get into the New Testament, I discovered and, and, and came to learn how Jesus, who was son of David and king, uh, and whose mother was Mary, our queen, how G- Jesus takes his 12 apostles, like the 12 governors of Solomon, uh, he chooses one, Peter, and gives him the keys of the kingdom of heaven, not David, but the kingdom of heaven. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open, and establishes this prime ministership. I saw the, the, the 12 apostles as the 12 governors of Solomon's kingdom, and then I realized that, oh boy, 
through the sacrament of baptism, the church teaches us that we're entered into and become children of God, but also members of the kingdom, citizens of the kingdom. And that through confirmation, we are strengthened for combat. Now that's the church's term, not mine. And so I stepped back and I saw this analogy and I said, oh my gosh, you know, Jesus knew exactly what he was doing, of course, you know, when he was establishing his kingdom, he was setting up this kingdom structure with him as with himself as king, with his mother Mary as queen, with Peter as the prime minister, with the 12 apostles together, making up the 12 governors. And you and I, through baptism and confirmation, are citizens of that kingdom and knighted to do battle. Now, in relationship to God, we're sons and daughters. But in relationship to the king, we're his knights. Okay. And so as I started seeing this, I wrote that book called To Knighthood to, expe- to explain this, that the sacraments are there for the very purpose of not only our initiation into the kingdom through baptism, but our strengthening for combat. Because what does canon law tell us? I, and I know people don't read canon law anymore, but what does it tell us about the obligation of confirmation? When somebody is confirmed, we are obliged, it says. Canon law says we are apl- obliged to spread and defend the faith by word and deed. Well, what's the mission of a knight in a kingdom? To spread and defend the kingdom by word and deed, you see. And so to me, this reality of, of me is not just a child of God, but through the sacraments of baptism and confirmation, I made a knight, a warrior in the kingdom, a soldier in God's kingdom, who is tasked with an obligation to spread and defend this kingdom. This is why, you know, we use the term evangelization, you know, that's, that is spreading the kingdom by sharing our faith and evangelizing others. This is how we as knights engage the world to spread the the kingdom and to conquer the world for Christ and place them eventually at the end of time at the feet of Christ. And we all have an obligation and a role to play. And this is where the rosary, the warrior's rosary plays in too, Bear, because when you see yourself as a warrior in the kingdom created by God to not only be his, his child in his, in his kingdom, which is ours. You know, see, Paul tells us that, you know, the, that, you know, the kingdom of God is it's, it's ours. It's our inheritance as long as we suffer with him. And that means we need to engage in this battle. And, you know, if it calls us to, to, to lay our lives down, then we do that. But a lot of times it's not just laying our lives down on the battlefield, you know, through the spilling of our blood. It's the sacrifice of up for others, the self-denial, the laying down of yourself for the good of someone else, whether it be a family member or for a friend or for somebody you don't even know, like our young our men and, and women in the military, you know. Um, but just that dying to self even. This is what we're called to be as, as, as knights and warriors in the kingdom. Um, and, and it's not it – isn't, it isn't just, uh, you know, just a nice, uh, you know, cliche on a bumper sticker. It is true. The Christian life on earth is a warfare, and Christ gave us the sacraments to enable us to be knights in his kingdom, men and women, warrior princesses and knights in his kingdom here and now. And I, I do this uh, understanding. I've unpacked these sacraments and the concept of military language. And if I lay them out for you, you're going to see it. Baptism is enlistment. This is what Council of Trent said. Baptism is an enlistment into the kingdom. Confirmation is strengthening for combat. Now, what I've come to discover is that when Jesus gave us the Eucharist as a soldier, those are no disrespect. Those are meals ready to eat. MREs on the battlefield because every soldier needs to be fed on a daily basis. And our Lord gives us himself in the Eucharistic meal. The sacrament of confession is the medic on the battlefield. When we get mortally wounded or venially wounded, these are military battle terms. You're more, you get a mortal wound. That's a headshot, dude. You know, you get a venial wound. You know, okay, you get shot in the shoulder or in the leg or something, but the sacrament of penance is there to to mend that, to heal that, to get you back in the battle. If you're mortally wounded, it brings you back to life and puts you back out in battle. The sacrament of of holy orders is the commissioning of our priests as commissioned officers. No platoon is made up of a bunch of listed men. They always have a commissioned officer to lead them in battle. 
And every parish is a platoon. And every parish goes to battle, particularly every Sunday, led by the commissioned officer, the priest. And then you have matrimony, which is where we get more recruits from. That's recruitment. And then you have, <laughs> then you awesome. have the last <laughs> rites, man. The, the, the last rites. That's our 21-gun salute home, dude. You know, so all of this, we can see this militarily, you know, in the concept of spiritual warfare. And why is it that the Christian life on earth is a warfare? Because the battle began in heaven and it spilled over onto the earth. Amen. And Christ, although he has conquered the devil, he has made it possible for you and I to share in that victory with him by engaging in the battle, in his kingdom, as his knights and warriors. You know, I laughed when you said recruitment, but... I was listening to Archbishop Chaput at the Napa Institute this summer, and people were yeah. saying, what is the most effective thing we can do uh, to spread Christianity? He said, get married, have children, raise them up in the Lord and love each other. And it's really true. Uh, you're, 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 the way you uh, spoke about that is just right on. Dude, I love it. I just love it. And you know, one thing you told me, and I, did, I wasn't aware of this, is that some bishops, when you're confirmed, it used to be yeah. almost all the time, but now there's still some— now, when you get confirmed, they slap you on the face. Yes, yeah. uh, you got sure. you got twenty seconds. Tell me about that before we have to go. Yeah, they would slap you on your face, you know, to to indicate two things: um, one, so that you would remember it, but two, as a symbol to you, letting you know that life is not going to be an easy walk, and you are now strengthened because you are going to you are going to get hurt, and, wanna, and you are going to you're going to be struggling. You know, uh, during, when the Muslims begin to take over Christendom. Uh, uh, if you didn't profess to become Islam, you had to pay an annual tax. I think it's called a jizra. And yeah. you not just had to pay it, you had to show up in front of the tax collector. He would berate you, yell at you, scream at you, and then he would take a slap at your face. Mm. And I wonder if somehow there's some, the, the tradition goes back to some time like that because you got, well, if you're going to take up the cross, you got to be willing to, uh, to recognize you're going into the, into the fight. We're talking with my friend Tom Sullivan, who changed my life when he gave me the gift of his warrior rosary. And now it's changed a lot of other people's lives. So many people have gone to our website and, and, and have bought that, that rosary. And so you can go um, to bearwasnick.com and we can send it out directly to your uh, family for Christmas. Uh, if you're looking to evangelize a man, this would be a great, uh, one of the great gifts you can give them. Tom, we got to run. Uh, God bless you, brother. I know you're strong. Keep up the fight. Never let your sword down on the battlefield, brother. And I know you're always so busy, but our radio show is yours, so whenever you want to come on. And for everyone out there in Radio Land, Viva Cristo Rey. Go to our website, bearwasnick.com, and you can uh, subscribe to this radio show. You can actually get it sent to you. And for those of you who want to, you can go to YouTube and subscribe to our Bear Wozniak YouTube channel, and you can watch us while we record this show. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. Take care, buddy. God bless you. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.